All right, welcome back to another day trading recap video. And so today, finishing up with a small green day, about $40, $39.89 finishing up. Uh, I had one solid trade today uh, pre-market on Acer. And then the rest of the day, there wasn't much opportunity except ATER, which had a nice front side right at the open. However, I just, uh, I, I completely missed it. I did not, it wasn't paying attention to it. And you know, the front side, you know, I guess it was sort of clean, but it wasn't the moves, you know, that I would be expecting if I was trading this stock. I would be expecting, you know, like a move uh, much faster than it has been. It only moved over the course of an hour and a half or about an hour. Uh, I don't know, 45% in about 45 minutes. That's actually kind of fast now, now that I think about it. But yeah, I completely missed it. Just wasn't on my radar. I was looking at other stocks. By the time I saw it, I thought it was just too too far, um, too far extended. So I completely missed that one. But so let's look at the stocks that I traded. So ACER was the stock that I traded pre-market. Um, we got some news. Um, FDA breakthrough therapy designation. So that squeezed up right out of the gates. Didn't see it until. It was getting stalled up around 380. Had a false breakout here at 380, pulled back, and then it reclaimed VWAP, and then it was back on my radar. I was looking to get aggressive for the breakthrough 3.8, and I put a starter in. My first starter was at 3.7, so right as it broke across the VWAP, volume was coming in. It's a very beautiful setup. Flat top breakout, uh, support off the 9 EMA, and I started adding, adding, adding. Uh, it broke out. I took by profits uh, in the 90s, in the high 80s, and then I added back on a dip for trying to look for a breakthrough four. Didn't end up happening. Pulled back a little bit more and added it looking for, just looking just as a potential one minute pullback before another leg higher. But um, I was very conservative in this area. I was taking, you know, small losses, small gains, because the volume was decreasing, uh, the tape wasn't that strong, and then I saw a big buy spoof order that kind of spoofed the book, and then there was a huge uh, sell here, uh, breaking down back down through VWAP, and uh, I was holding a core position through this sell off, but it is what it is. Uh, small loss. Uh, I gave a little bit back off the top. Uh, I was up 40 bucks, 41 or 43, something like that. I think around 43 at the high. And I gave back maybe about a third, and then I started making profit back on PLX and CLVS. Um, I was really hoping ACER would, would stick and make a nice leg higher. At the open, you see I traded this again, more to red to green move uh, after this huge dump here at the open, and then... Uh, reclaimed itself i put in a starter looking to add but it just got i kept just rejecting and i i just was finished with that stock and i ended up selling off all day that was a that would be a huge short damn 25 percent short if you would have got into that wow uh it was hard to borrow though for me so i wouldn't be able to trade that or short the other stocks that i traded clvs let's look at clvs so here at the open, we got a nice front side move here. Uh, I bought this pullback off the 9 EMA, and I was looking to size into it, but you know it, the volume was light, wasn't really. I was looking for this these two candles to be higher than these previous two candles on the front side, and I didn't really just size into it. I made about 10 cents, which is pretty solid, but it was on a small position size. So I made about 3.2% on a small position size. Okay, is what it is. And then here on the another pullback under $3, I was looking for a breakthrough three, and then I got a nice breakthrough three, small scalp. Um, again, you know, it really wasn't too much, too convincing for me to start slinging big size again. 
uh, like I did on Acer. Acer was very convincing, and I did size in. Uh, I was at 300 shares, so about almost a thousand dollar position size. So that's pretty solid uh, for me in position sizing wise. And then here at the backside, I was looking for a mean reversion back to the VWAP, which we did get, but I was a little bit too early. And you know, I on the backside, you know, I just don't have that patience to be holding through, you know, slow one minute grinding candles like this we saw back to uh, the VWAP or mean reversion. Uh, I'm just not, I guess I'm just not used to trading that kind of setup. However, it did, you know, give a nice, you know, if you played mean reversion, 5% there, potential 3% there. Um, so it did give opportunity. It's just that I don't have the patience to be holding through, you know, a backside consolidation. Uh, but the reason I was convinced is because we had a multi-day support. Uh, and then we had this trend line here. So it was a, it was a chance that, you know, that mean reversion uh, would, would still hold up from the support that we had the previous two or three days. So I like those mean reversion trades on multi-day support or multi-day runners. On single-day runners, not so much unless there's a super lot of volume. Um, but then again, I don't have the patience anyways to be holding through that. I really got to work on that if I really want to excel in that type of setup. It does give opportunity. However, it's still very, very risky that you can get a nice, another flush. You know, we could have easily got another flush off the rejection of here, flush down, you know, never really recovered back over VWAP. Uh, you never really know. So, you know, I like sticking to my front side moves. That's where I make most of my money. And so I'm just going to keep, you know, working on that, working on that and sizing, scaling that strategy. Because that's where I make bulk of my, my money. Uh, sometimes, you know, we don't have that front side move. And in days like those that we don't have any front side moves, I neither red or break even or small green. Um, but most of the days we do have a nice front side opportunity. Other stocks that I traded, PLX, that was moving. However, I just thought it was moving kind of slow. I, I don't really like these really, really cheap stocks. Um, it's really hard to get a good move on it. I mean, here was 7%, but 7% was only 10, 10 cents. I don't know. I guess it's all perception-wise, but uh, just, just how slow and grindy it was uh, kind of turned me off to it. However, uh, this pullback here, I was kind of looking for a move here. Kind of scalped it for a small gain. Not that much uh, on that one. And then here, pre-market, I was looking for that breakthrough, and it got stuffed. So a small loss on that one. Overall, only up maybe about very, very small on PLX. Then I traded RCAT, which I thought RCAT would give uh, this move back through the high of 267. I thought the news was solid. Yeah, he got a, he got a solid $9 million order, a drone order. And I thought that would be that catalyst would be enough to give a nice front side move, but uh, just didn't give really anything at all, uh, except I mean uh, I guess I read the green and a break through the VWAP, and I did scalp it a little bit, but I was looking for this move to continue. I was I bought here at 248, and I was really looking for that surge to the highs, and uh, so I was holding it longer than I would have. I mean I could have got you know. I remember at one point I was up six cents. Six cents is maybe two percent. I could have got a two percent gain. However, I was really looking for that ten percent gain from fifty to seventy. I was looking for a nice ten percent gain, not a measly two percent. And so that's why I was holding a little bit longer. And then eventually I kind of took it off for a scratch after this false breakout. Uh, and then we then we reclaimed the nine EMA and the VWAP here. And I was looking for now two five back through. The pivot point of 256 or 255 and then back through the high holding it for a couple minutes and then we broke down through a VWAP and then I sold it and then we had a false breakout here and it was just going sideways and it just completely was like you know what it's not going to happen the market's not that hot uh, volume is declining significantly so I kind of just at that point I walked away with a small scratch 
or about a scratch or a small loss. So I can't really complain today. I have one solid good trade, and that's really all you need. Uh, if you do that every day, you can be very, very consistent and make some good money, uh, keeping your losers very small and sizing in to a solid A-plus setup. And today I was able to do that on Acer, and I'm walking away with a solid base hit today to start off the week and to start off the month. So I'm, I'm very happy so far with uh, my performance the first few days of April, uh, first two days of April. And I hope uh, this continues. I keep sizing up. My winners get bigger and bigger and bigger. And yeah, so I hope the market heats up again soon so we can see some more solid front sides. We only had a couple opportunities today on ATER and Acer and CLVS, but hopefully we can see some better opportunities soon. So if you guys like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe for some more trading recap videos. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.